Are you ready for tips and tricks with Miss Linda? That's me. Today's tip is what's best? Is it liquid watercolors or is it a pan? I was thrilled when they came out with the liquid watercolors. And as you can see, I tested them out here just to show you. These are your liquid watercolors and this is a pan. You need to hydrate these, which means you need to put water on them. You need to try to stay in the little pot. These are not a really, really super high grade one. You can purchase ones that are extremely expensive and extremely well made. So I'm swirling the red around. Um, this is the pan. It doesn't have a true red. I'm going to eliminate some of the water and see if I can get a stronger color. Please take a little more patience. And this is what we all learned with. I know that it hasn't been all that many years. So less water gives you a stronger color. I'm going to clean my brush and dry it off. Now let's dip in. This is the red. It looks very deep and it is. Let's put it next to it. I still had a lot of water on my brush. Totally different colors. And actually each company that you deal with and each type of watercolor, these blend very easily. And this time I'm going to try to get more water off of it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Don't squish it in there. Your brush should always look like this, nice and wet. I'm going to go with a blue this time next to it. See how it's transparent and you can see one color over the other. All right, clean that blue off and let's try the pan blue. And this is not the only watercolor info. I've got some really cool experiments that we're going to do after this. Oh, now this one is extremely thick, so we may get, I'm sure it's not going to be a true blue. I can tell by looking at it. Let's put it over here. Oh, it's a true blue. It's very thick, which means Miss Linda needs to hydrate my brush. See, it's kind of dry. Too much water and it's no good. Not enough water. Watercolors are something that you really need to take your time to become familiar with. See how you don't have the transparency where, where you can see through it? And I'm just going to scoop some red. No, I'm not. It didn't come up. I'm going to make purple on this. And this is another problem where you can mix liquids. It's not a problem. It just makes it harder. It's a totally different type of paint. So when you're choosing your paints, check them out. Look up reviews and see what works best for you. Now, I'm going to move these off to the side. And we're going to experiment. And I actually, through my experiments, um, <clears throat> kind of didn't look at it. So Miss Linda actually put a V on this for vinegar, wrote salt on this, and wrote soap because we're using dish soap today. We're going to see what happens when you do a watercolor wash. That's something where you put the water on the paper first. Let's get my plain paper out and let me show you. This is what happens when you accidentally put your salt in your vinegar. It's actually beautiful and it was just straight blue liquid watercolor paint, but there must have been some red in it when they made it for it to pull out like that. These are amazing. Now this one is dish soap. Not as much movement, but you have that nice deep center. These all remind me of something under the sea or something under a microscope. This one is vinegar. Vinegar really made it thin out and move. And again, it pulled red out. I don't know why. And then this is salt. Today we're going to try using the red and see what happens with the red. I want to show you each style. This to me is the coolest. It almost has that snowflake wintry kind of look to it. So I'll put these off to the side. And now that I know what to do, I'm going to take my salt and put this in there now first. I would say, since you have about this much water. It's hard to turn a water. I'll put some in the top to see. What about a teaspoon and a half? I'm going to let this sit while we work with the vinegar and the soap. It's about a 
teaspoon. Pour it in there. And I'm using different brushes so that I don't contaminate them, you know, like putting salt in the vinegar. But again, Miss Linda always says, you never know, nothing's a mistake. So I'll take some vinegar and again, just a little cap full of vinegar. Vinegar is strong. Get permission if you're a child to use this. It's not something, as well as dish soap. Actually, always ask permission. And number two, your grown-up will learn too. And then soap. I'm going to take some clear soap. If it was colored soap, it would put color into the, or pigment into the color. So I'm just going to give it a squirt. All right. I have these all set up. Now all I have to do is stir, paint, and add color. You ready? Move my, I have this rag here just in case I make a mess. This is good watercolor paper. You can use any paper to experiment with these. So I'll take this brush and put it up to the side. Now, vinegar and water. Swirl it around. Get a good layer on there. You want, your paper will absorb it. Stir it so that you know that you have enough vinegar on there that it doesn't sink to the bottom. Things separate in water. You can tell if your paper is covered because it's shiny where it's wet and it's not shiny. All right, let's try the red. I'm going to, there we are. I'm going to just squeeze the excess water out of this. All right, you ready? It's exciting and you're just gonna touch. Boom, fireworks on your paper. It's amazing. If you go too close to the edge, because this gets a little rounded, ooh, that one's cool. I'm gonna go in the center of this and see what happens if I add more pigment. Another word for color, nice. All right, slide this, oh, you know what? I'm gonna remember this is vinegar. Okay, put this one on. New brush, because I don't want, I'll use this when I accidentally <laughs> mix the salt and the vinegar together. Let's try the salt. I'm gonna mix this together. You can see that some of it's still on the bottom. It is coarse sea salt. You can use table salt, any type of salt that you have. It just takes a little longer for it to melt or for it to become one. I think it's become one. All right. I'll hold this, it's easier than I won't drip all over the place. This is fun experimenting with your colors and different types of washes and backgrounds and you know what kind of effect happens when you do it this way when I was in college many 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 years ago we did use substances but they were more things that you could buy from the um, store so this is salt take the excess liquid off and I'm going to do all reds this one, I think I thought was my favorite on the other one. Now think about this, if you're doing like a garden scene or even an underwater scene and you wanna set the mood and you wanna start out with something, if you just did a giant page of this with different colors, in fact, let's do that. I'm gonna rinse this off. Let's put a little yellow in there. This is the salt. Let's see what happens. See if we get any orange out of this. It's not moving quite as much as the red did. Hmm, very interesting. All right, now I'm gonna write this salt. And then I'm gonna write this was vinegar. I'll just put a V on there. There's no other V words. Slide that off to the side. And I am gonna mix the salt and vinegar. I accidentally, I was doing it and I didn't pay attention my first time. Put the brush away and get a new one. And I, put the salt right in the vinegar water. And then when I picked up the other one, it was like, oh yeah, Linda. And then I thought, well, let's see what happens. What the heck? I always like finding new things. Now this is soap. This will actually bubble up as you're pushing, putting it on there. It's just regular old clear dish soap. And I was not sure if this was going to work at all because it has that glycerin in it. So it kind of keeps it together. It actually d soaks in the paper and is a little stiffer. All right, we'll put that, nope, we won't put that down. We will clean that off. Grab us some red. I'm actually running out of red, so guess what? I'm gonna dip in the blue 
And you can see that this one does not have an immediate reaction like the others. It has a very slow moving because of that glycerin, which is what makes soap. Well, since I'm doing this, let's put some yellow on there too. Yeah, that's going to be a funny color because I didn't mix it. You have to experiment. Now, since I accidentally put the salt and vinegar together, I'm going to take my salt water, put some vinegar in it. All right, this is soap. It's good to label things because afterwards you'll be looking at it going, um, yeah, I don't remember. I did use different colors, so it would have been a little easier. All right, one more piece. Did not put my salt. See, I smelled the salt this time. I should have done that the first time. Let's see what happens. I'm going to add quite a bit of vinegar. This is intentional, which means I meant to do it. It wasn't a cool accidental experience. Now, this has yellow on it, so I'm actually going to clean it off in my water bucket. And let's stir these two together, and let's see what kind of blue action we can get. Now you can see there's a little bit of red on my brush still from when I did the vinegar straight, or the straight salt, pardon me. All right, well, I can smell that vinegar. Vinegar is strong, and it's also a really good health benefit. All right, there we go. Are you ready? Dry this off so I don't get too much water. Let's see what happens with our deliberate whoa baby look at that I did put a lot of vinegar in there that's amazing so try it mix salt with your soap water see what happens if you don't have watercolor paper find the thickest paper you can or even use the back of one of those boxes from one of the boxes that you saved anything works don't think that you're limited by what you see us using you know put your thinking cap on and get your own ideas and have fun